Well, I think social movements uh, need to constantly reinvent themselves and always connect with the with the personal. Avoid uh, becoming too uh, single focused. Build solidarity where it makes sense. Yes, build solidarity for the sake of building solidarity, but also finding uh, points of common interest uh, where where uh, movements can overlap. It's not a zero-sum game. Uh, that actually there's strength in people from different movements being active in different issues. That knowledge is is uh, extremely valuable because it it extends beyond you know a certain group. And I think that's happened with Julian's case. I think that's that's happening more and more. For example, people who care about the environment um, are now interested in, in what WikiLeaks has published about the environment, uh, the interests that are uh, driving Julian's silencing and persecution are often the same interests that are uh, trying to um, silence the the activism uh, that draws attention to the environment, and similarly with with other issues, the powerful groups whose interests are uh, perceived to to be affected by, you know, um, activists working on issues of the environment or uh, austerity or whatever, um, that they are the same power. Uh, powerful um, people who are trying to silence Julian uh, for the same reasons. It's really important to understand uh, that sometimes the, the framework, the structure is, uh, is uh, weighted in favor of um, the other side. Julian has had to fight this case as someone who was persecuted and prosecuted and so he has had to fight it as a defendant and then you're always fighting from below. An interesting innovation that the Russell Tribunal, the Elmar Tribunal, which has been used in Julian's case by um, those who oppose his, his prosecution and his case, uh, that is to use the same format against those who are persecuting Julian. And it's a very powerful format uh, because it puts them on the spot. That's critical for public opinion. And I think this is the ki kind of creative approach that is really useful for um, activists. They always have to reinvent, be creative, and think about um, how to use the tools that are sometimes used against them um, in reverse. Look, when WikiLeaks published the Iraq war logs and the Afghan war logs, what did the US government do? Um, they stopped talking about what was in the war logs. They shifted the debate by then accusing Julian and WikiLeaks of absurd um, things. Uh, but then they shifted the debate uh, away from war crimes, from um, extrajudicial killings, from the killings of, of, of uh, 15,000 civilian, civilians in Iraq. You know, very specific things that had been revealed through WikiLeaks were no longer talked about because the US then um, put Julian and WikiLeaks on the spot. They shifted the debate away from themselves and onto onto the publisher. And this is a, a well-known trick, right? You, you, you try to kill the messenger. Um, so I think it's important to analyze what these, what these uh, methods are, what, the, what methods the other side uses, and understand them, and understand how they're used, how they're deployed. You know, what does it mean when the CIA uh, refuses to confirm or deny? What does it mean when, when they uh, position is to deny, counterattack, uh, you know, like they have certain methods that, that
that are really important to understand, especially if you're an activist. There's a playbook uh, that if you go into um, if you go into activism with un without understanding the playbook of the other side, then you're at a disadvantage. And it's not like it's a uh, a big mystery. Uh, this is this is quite well known. Like um, you know, the use of um, people who might infiltrate the movement um, or who might uh, uh, introduce uh, chaos in the protest. Uh, and this kind of thing. These are things that people need to look out for. And, uh, and if you want to be effective, you need to be aware of all these things. Well, throughout the years that um, I've been fighting to have Jolin back, I've thought a lot about the idea of hope and I don't think hope really um, is a complete enough idea to motivate someone because in a way it's a bit passive and you need more than hope in order to fight for what you what you want that involves actually trying to do everything you can to make uh, the goal real. Uh, something that I've, I think applies to everything in life, uh, even when, when it's not such an extreme situation, uh, that hope can actually become a, a curse if, if it demobilizes and you need a lot more. Well, you need to have a clear idea of what you want. And in my case, uh, that's easy. I just want to win home. And I want him home now. But then there's also how do you get there? Um, what are the obstacles in your way? Mm -hmm. And you can, I think it's important to not be cynical and also mm -hmm. to not, to not be exclusive, to kind of understand that, uh, that there are many potential friends and allies uh, that that not only the people who see things from your perspective are uh, the ones uh, who can be your allies and friends, that it's an opportunity to build bridges, uh, and that actually there's a lot of goodwill out there, and a lot of decent people that uh, are moved to do the right thing uh, if they understand what the issue is.